Chapter 2 Then on October 17th of that same year, the Lord sent another message through the prophet Haggai. Say this to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of God's people there in the land. Is there anyone who can remember this house, the temple, as it was before? In comparison, how does it look to you now? It must seem like nothing at all. But now take courage, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Take courage, Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Take courage, all you people still left in the land, says the Lord. Take courage and work, for I am with you, says the Lord Almighty. My spirit remains among you, just as I promised when you came out of Egypt. So do not be afraid. For this is what the Lord Almighty says. In just a little while I will again shake the heavens and the earth. I will shake the oceans and the dry land too. I will shake all the nations, and the treasures of all the nations will come to this temple. I will fill this place with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord Almighty. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will bring peace. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken. On December 18th of the second year of King Darius's reign, the Lord sent this message to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Ask the priests this question about the law. If one of you is carrying a holy sacrifice in his robes and happens to brush against some bread or stew, wine or oil, or any other kind of food, will it also become holy? The priest replied, No. Then Haggai asked, but if someone becomes ceremonially unclean by touching a dead person and then brushes against any of the things mentioned, will it be defiled? And the priest answered, Yes. Then Haggai said, That is how it is with this people and this nation, says the Lord. Everything they do and everything they offer is defiled. So think about this from now on. Consider how things were going for you before you began to lay the foundation of the Lord's temple. When you hoped for a twenty-bushel crop, you harvested only ten. When you expected to draw fifty gallons from the wine-press, you found only twenty. I sent blight and mildew and hail to destroy all the produce of your labor. Yet even so, you refuse to return to me, says the Lord. On this eighteenth day of December, the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, carefully consider this. I am giving you a promise now, while the seed is still in the barn, before you have harvested your grain, and before the grapevine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have produced their crops. From this day onward I will bless you. The Lord sent this second message to Haggai on December 18th. Tell Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, that I am about to shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow royal thrones, destroying the power of foreign kingdoms. I will overturn their chariots and charioteers. The horses will fall, and their riders will kill each other. But when this happens, says the Lord Almighty, I will honor you, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, my servant. I will treat you like a signet ring on my finger, says the Lord, for I have specially chosen you. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken.'